This is the eighth video in the Edexcel C3 revision tutorial series. Today we'll be looking at reversible reactions as well as the Haber process. In this tutorial we will look at the uses and dangers of nitrogenous fertilisers. We will look at how chemical reactions can be reversible. We will have a look at what we mean by dynamic equilibrium and finally we will look at how temperature, pressures and catalysts can be used to produce acceptable yields in the Haber process. So what are reversible reactions? So far in chemistry you will have looked at reactions in terms of reactants and products. So therefore A plus B goes to C plus D. In a reversible reaction, the products of the reaction can themselves react to produce the original reactant. So here we would have A plus B with a reversible arrow. We have an arrow pointing forwards and an arrow pointing backwards underneath as shown, going to C plus D. This means that C plus D can react to form A plus B. All reversible reactions will reach something called dynamic equilibrium. When a reversible reaction reaches dynamic equilibrium, this means that the amounts of reactants and products will reach a certain balance and stay there. When it is a dynamic equilibrium, it means that the reactions are still taking place in both the forwards and the reverse direction, but the overall effect is zero because the reactions cancel each other out. This means that the reactions are taking place at exactly the same rate in both directions. So the rate of the forward reaction is equal to the rate of the reverse reactions. A reversible reaction will reach dynamic equilibrium providing it takes place in a closed system. A closed system simply means that none of the reactants or products can escape. We will now look at ways that we can affect the position of equilibrium. In all reversible reactions, we can affect the position of equilibrium. This means that we can change the relative amounts of reactants and products being made. The easiest way to adjust these is via changing either the temperature or the pressure, meaning that we can get more product and less reactants. This is important for use in industry. As you may remember, all reactions are either exothermic or endothermic. For reversible reactions, this means that in one direction, the reaction will be exothermic and in the opposite direction, it will be endothermic. If we raise the temperature, then the endothermic reaction will be favoured as it will use the, up the extra heat. It will take in that heat. Likewise, if we reduce the temperature, then the exothermic reaction will be favoured as it is able to give out more heat into the surrounding environment. We can also change the position of equilibrium via increasing or decreasing the pressure. Many reactions have a greater volume on one side, either of the products or reactants. We can tell this by looking at the number of molecules involved in the reaction. When we raise the pressure, we will favour the reaction which produces less volume, so we'll favour the reaction which produces less molecules, and if we lower the pressure, it will favour the reaction which produces more volume or more molecules. This is because it is much easier to fit a smaller volume into a smaller space. However, raising the temperature and pressure will also increase the rate of reaction. This means that we will reach equilibrium faster. However, as they will also change the position of the equilibrium, this can result in less product. In order to speed up a reaction without affecting the position of equilibrium, we can use a catalyst. A catalyst will speed up both the forward and backward reactions by the same amount. This means that we will reach equilibrium faster, however we will still make the same amount of product as we would without the catalyst, we can just make it faster. So we do not change the position of the equilibrium. 
we will now look at the Haber process, which is an important industrial process that uses this idea of reversible reactions. The Haber process is an industrial process used to make ammonia. Ammonia is NH3. NH3 can be used to make fertilisers. Nitrogen and hydrogen are required in order to make the ammonia, giving us the equation N2, which is a gas, plus 3H2, which is also a gas, is a reversible reaction to 2NH3, which is also a gas. The nitrogen is extracted easily from the air. The hydrogen is obtained from natural gas. Because the reaction is reversible, this means it recurs in both directions, not all of the nitrogen and hydrogen will convert to ammonia, so therefore the reaction will reach a dynamic equilibrium. In order to control the amount of ammonia being made, we need to be able to move the position of this dynamic equilibrium. The first thing that we need to know about the Haber process is that it's an exothermic reaction in the forwards direction. This means that if we increase the temperature, we will start to favour the reverse reaction and start to make nitrogen and hydrogen gas. However, at very low temperatures, we will get an incredibly slow rate of reaction. This means that the equilibrium will be reached, but it will happen much slower. So in order to get a nice rate of reaction, we do need to increase the temperature. In industry, we use a temperature of 450 degrees Celsius. This is a compromise as it gives us an acceptable yield in an acceptable time. In regards to pressure, we can see from the reaction that a higher pressure would favour the forward reaction. This is because we have four molecules on the left hand side and only two molecules on the right hand side. This means that we want to use as high a pressure as possible in order to force the equilibrium to the right so that we get more product. However, we can't use too high a pressure as this would make the equipment too dangerous to use as well as making the plant too expensive to build. Therefore, we use a pressure of 200 atmospheres. This temperature and pressure that we use are known as the Haber compromise. An iron catalyst is also used in order to make the reaction go faster, however this doesn't affect the percentage yield. It is important to note that any unreacted nitrogen and hydrogen gas can be recycled back into the system in order to react to form our ammonia. And finally, that the ammonia that is formed is a gas, however it is then cooled and condensed into a liquid in order to be removed from the container. The percentage yield is the amount of ammonia produced by the Haber process, which is dependent on the temperature and pressure of the reaction. Here we have a graph showing the increase in pressure as well as an increase in temperature against the percentage of ammonia yield. We can see the effect that increasing the pressure has on the yield as well as the effect of decreasing the temperature. We can see that at 350 degrees Celsius and 400 atmospheric pressure, we would get the highest ammonia yield. However, as we have just seen from the Haber process, we use a temperature of 450 and a pressure of 200. Although our yield is much, much lower, the reaction happens much faster and at a safe pressure. A large percentage of the ammonia produced is used to make nitrogenous fertilisers. Nitrogenous fertilisers are used because they increase plant growth. If you think back to the nitrogen cycle from B1, you should be able to remember the effect of nitrogen on plant growth. However, nitrogenous fertilisers can pose a danger to the environment.
This is if they enter rivers or lakes and they can cause eutrophication. Again, you should remember eutrophication from Edexcel B1. The nitrogen from the fertilizers leaks into the rivers or lakes, causing excessive growth of a layer of algae on the surface of the water, causing this algae bloom. The plants living below the surface die because the layer of algae blocks the light, meaning they can no longer photosynthesize. The decomposers in the water will then feed on the dead plants, using up all of the oxygen in the water, causing the fish to die. Therefore, it is important that farmers do not overuse nitrogenous fertilisers on their crops in order to prevent this phenomenon known as eutrophication. This concludes this tutorial video on reversible reactions and the Haber process. In the next video, we will start to look at organic chemistry, starting with homologous series before moving on to alcohols, carboxylic acids and esters.